Let everybody grab your drink, sit down if you're relaxing, otherwise let's get cooking. And welcome everybody to the Monday Morning Cooking Club Friday Zoom session. Very, very happy to have you all here with me in the kitchen. I am Lisa from the Monday Morning Cooking Club, if you don't know that. And I am representing all four Monday Morning Cooking Club girls today because they are busy and I'm doing it alone, but I'm just happy to have all of you and there's a few hundred of you, so I'm pretty happy you're here with me in the kitchen. I hope that you are mostly cooking along because nothing gives me greater joy, I have to say, than to get all the photos and emails and social media posts from you afterwards telling me that you've been cooking along. It is nachas. And if you don't know what that means, it means joy, inexplicable joy. That's what it gives me. So keep sending those pics in. Um, oh, so Ariane says she was going to. Ariane says she was going to make this. Oh, sorry, Arlene said she was going to make this for Shabbat tonight, Friday night dinner. But now you can make it with me, which is amazing. Okay, so someone has asked. Um, it's her first time here. Yes, we will record this. Um, this is being recorded, and as long as I get my technical things right, which mostly happens, like you know, nine times out of ten, it will be posted, and I'll try to post it within about an hour after this finishes. All right. So let's start. Let's go through the ingredients that we're going to need for this Israeli rice pilaf. Sorry, that's my timer. Ignore that. Okay. I've got this new timer which I just got. Just this little one. And sometimes when you press start, it happens all the time, it just resets and so then it goes off again and again. So that's what that was. I've got nothing in the oven. We're all good to go. Okay, Israeli rice pilaf. I'm going to tell you the ingredients. I'll tell you the amazing story about this rice once everything's cooking because we'll have a few minutes to chat then. Okay, so we're going to need, firstly, 75 grams, which is about two of these nests of vermicelli noodles. And I'm just using supermarket San Remo, any brand you can find. This is the vermicelli egg noodles, which is the same ones I actually use for my lakshan kugel. So you need about two nests of those, which is 75 grams quarter of a cup of olive oil, two cups, which is 440 grams of basmati or long grain rice, one onion, which we're gonna chop, quarter of a cup of pine nuts, quarter of a cup of currants or sultanas or golden raisins. I've got these beautiful um, sun-dried black currants, which I really, really like, um, which I bought in Sydney, if anyone's in Sydney, I bought them at Parisi's in there. I really, really like them. And I put them in my scones as well. They're really nice and sweet, but not too sweet. And um, four cups of chicken stock. You can use chicken stock from a packet. You can use homemade chicken soup, which you can dilute a little bit. Um, I'm using this one at the moment. It's the Mordo one that you buy at gourmet food stores. Maggie Beer one is also quite a nice brand. Many butchers and chicken, chicken shops also make stock. For this recipe, I would not use a stock cube because you're going to be able to taste it. Um, so I just wouldn't go the stock cube for this, okay? So please just stick with homemade, store-bought, or packet chicken stock. Um, is rice vermicelli okay? You know what, I think it's worth trying. I'm not sure what happens when you fry it off, and you'll see what I mean in a minute um, with the rice vermicelli. Um, Esther wants the link to last week's session. Yeah. Esther, if you go to our YouTube channel, if you just go to YouTube and type in Monday Morning Cooking Club, you'll get the link to all our Zoom webinars and a million other videos that we've done. It's all there and you can find it really easily. So let's start cooking. You're gonna need two pans for this. You could probably do it in one, um, but I'm gonna do it today in two just because it's the way I've worked out how this can be done sort of in the shortest amount of time so you don't have to stay with me for too long. So we're going to have a medium saucepan. I think non-stick is always my preference when steaming rice, but it's not absolutely necessary. And I'm going to put it on a medium heat. And the first thing we're going to do is to fry off the noodles. And you have to really watch it because so many times, I can't tell you, I've put them in the oil, gone away to do something, and what happens? You end up with black noodles, which is not what you want. You don't want them burnt. So we're going to break them up into just little pieces. You don't have to measure it. You don't have to worry about it. But just imagine what size noodle you want um, flecked through your rice. So I'm just breaking them up and they break up quite easily. And I'll show you in a second. So everyone should just be having got their hand in the bowl and crunching away these noodles. 
and that's probably it. So, see, I've just broken them up. Um, yes, Esther talks about barberries. Yeah, barberries are used in Persian dishes and they're absolutely delicious. And I think they'd be really nice in here. They're more tart, perhaps, than the currants, but they'd be fabulous. Um, okay, so Arlene doesn't have chicken stock. Would you use, so if she's got chicken stock cubes, I would use half of what they recommend in on the packet. So maybe it's a teaspoon to a cup of water. I would have that. You don't, you really don't want to taste the chicken stock cube flavor in this. If it's in a vegetable soup where there's lots of other flavors, they can sort of be hidden, but in this you won't hide it. Um, so I would have whatever the packet recommends for cube to water ratio. Okay, we're gonna put half the olive oil. This is quarter of a cup. We're gonna do half of that into our hot saucepan. And into that oil, we're gonna put the noodles. You need to have your rice ready because the rice is gonna go in as soon as the noodles are done. So once the, once the oil is a bit warm, and the reason I'm not using nonstick today is because I want you to be able to see it in my black nonstick. It's a bit hard. Okay, so the rice is just starting to the rice. I've really got a problem today. I've got to think before I speak today. You know, some days you have your words and some days you don't. Maybe today is a don't for me. All right, oil's in the pan. Noodles are going in. You want them to sizzle. Yep, sizzling. Hope you can hear that. And I'm just going to saute them round. You can see in the oil, and I just want to brown them. That's all I'm trying to do. The heat is on medium high, and our aim is A, not to burn them, and B, to let them brown as quickly as you can. So they're starting to brown. You can see the edges are starting to go brown. Okay. Um, yeah, so, oh, someone said that if you use rice noodles, the rice vermicelli, they'll puff up. But will they go crispy is the question. Um, okay, so these are pretty much brown already. If I leave them for any longer, they will start to burn. Just a warning, because I've, as I've said earlier, I've chucked out many batches of them in the beginning. Rice goes in. Okay, so now I've got the rice and the noodles. And you do want your noodles to be brown. You can see the rice with the brown noodles. And I'm gonna sort of stir this around. The heat's now on high. And I'm going to toss it so that the rice gets a little toasted on the outside. That's what we're looking for. I would like to hear a little bit of crackling, which I can. Can you all carefully hear your own crackling if you're cooking? That's what you need to tell you that your pan is hot enough. As soon as it's really crackling and really toasty, I'm going to add the stock, which is the next step. Okay. Um, no, I do not wash the rice for this recipe before tossing it in. It's not necessary. For some recipes you do. Um, we have a, a beautiful recipe in our first book for Persian tadig, which is the crispy rice. And that one you wash and soak and wash and soak. Um, it's a different thing. This one, there's no need. Okay, so that's, the rice is browning. Hopefully everybody's got their rice on and everyone's got their rice in a big enough pot because remember it's gonna swell to probably four times the size that that is, okay. So I've got my rice and my noodles in the pot. I've got four cups of stock waiting to go in. I'm using basmati rice. You can also use any long grain rice. Okay, so once the rice is nice and toasted, how's everyone going? Uh, Miriam, sure, I'll slow down. Okay, so Miriam, just to repeat again, we've got the noodles in there which have been browned in half the oil and we've added the rice in once they're browned and we're tossing it around. Um, Linda, yes, absolutely, you can halve this recipe easily. Absolutely. Okay. So hopefully everybody's up to where I am. This serves eight people. So these two cups of rice serves eight people, I think quite generously. Okay. Yep, definitely halve the recipe without a problem. And I'd even leave the one onion because it's, there's nothing better than fried onion and rice. So leave the one onion and then it's really oniony and lovely. But you just halve the rice and halve the stock. Okay, so my rice is toasted. Okay, yep, so the noodles I used, I'll reach it in a second. This is starting to smoke a little bit. It's very hot. And now I'm just going to add all of the stock in. 
And if it doesn't sizzle, you know the pan's not hot enough. Perfect. Okay. I'm just going to stir that. Now, I want this now to come to the boil. I've got the stock, the noodles, and the rice in the pot. I want it to come to the boil. And as soon as it comes to the boil, I'm going to put the lid on and I'm going to turn it down to the lower setting and let it just steam and cook slowly and gently for 20 minutes. And that's it. And then it's done. And in the meantime, we're going to do all the rest. So I just give it a stir, make sure nothing's stuck in the corners. You can feel with your spoon that nothing's stuck. This is a very good job for a wooden spoon. The handle doesn't get hot, it's very solid and it, you can feel everything that's in the pot. Okay, so it's on high heat. And as soon as it comes to the boil, I'm gonna put the lid on. And then we need to get the rest of our ingredients ready. We're gonna start with one onion. And I, I don't need it finely chopped for this. I want it quite roughly chopped because I want to taste the onion and I wanna see the onion. Somebody asked which book it's in? Good question. It's in this one. It's always about the food. And that's it there, Israeli rice pilaf. And it's a beautiful story, which I'll tell you in a moment. Okay, so this is almost to the boil. In the meantime, Let's start with chopping the onion. So, as those of you who have watched these things before, we always use a green board in this kitchen and a green board means onion and garlic. And the idea is that you will never chop a watermelon or an apple or anything fruity on this because what will happen if you do, it'll taste like garlic and onion. So garlic and onion is green only in this kitchen. And of course, I'm using the trusty Victoria Knox steak knife that I talk about all the time as my favourite knife. So I'm just going to peel the onion. Just like this. And then I'm going to chop it on my green board. And I'm just waiting for this to boil. So hopefully everybody has this just about coming to the boil. You can see that it is boiling now. I'm gonna put the lid on. I'm gonna turn it down to low. And I'm just gonna move it to the front burner out of the way. And I'm gonna put my timer on for 20 minutes. Okay, so low heat, lid on. That's ready for the next step. Now I'll just find my timer. 20 minutes, we'll cook it. So the whole dish will be ready in 21 minutes. Okay, that's on properly. All right, so now we can slow down a bit. Okay, so um, it's on my low, Robin said how low, it's on my lowest setting. Um, it's, it's pretty low because it's got a lot of heat in it because it was boiling and you just want it to steam. Um, it's pretty much making steamed rice in that saucepan with some noodles and oil in there. Okay, so Liz said, can I slow down? Sure, no problem at all. Can you use spring onion? Um, can you use spring onion? Yeah, I don't see why not. It's a different flavour when you fry spring onions. Um, I, I wonder if it might be nice to have some raw spring onions on the top rather than frying them. What do you think? What's everyone's view on frying spring onions? If that's all you've got, fry them and see how they go. Probably quite lovely, actually. So yeah, try it with spring onions and let us know how it goes but I'm using your good old brown onion for this one. All right, so I'm gonna just chop it the way I always chop an onion. And again, doesn't need to be fine for this one. You want to see the onion, taste the onion and feel the texture of the, of the crispy edges. And I'm just gonna go across first, move these out of the way. Holding with two hands, going across, cutting probably about eight um, cuts across the onion and I'm going to turn it around and do the same the other way. And that's how I roughly chop an onion. Always have the flat side of the onion that you've halved on the board so it's stable and again crossways so you're cutting it along the grain of the onion first. Turn it around, watch your fingers, always have your fingers in and again across. And there in 
30 seconds is a lovely roughly chopped onion. Okay. Fry, Lois says fried shallots are delicious. You mean, see, this is the thing. You mean spring onions or do you mean shallots or do you mean eschalots? You know, in Victoria and New South Wales and Australia, they call things different things. Um, in um, New South Wales, we call the long onions, the long, sorry, in America, you call them green onions, the long green onions. In Victoria, I think you call them spring onions or are we spring onions? It's all, it's all mixed up. But anyway, we now call them... Um, shallots which are the long green ones and the spring onions are the long green ones with the bulb this is a brown onion and if you're in america they're green onions oh not green onions you're talking about eschalots like the little um the tiny little ones that look like little onions with the little bulbous shape yeah we call them shallots yeah exactly they're delicious right i agree they're delicious raw as well in a salad love them so much okay um, Kerry says, could you add fried mushrooms? Absolutely, that would be really delicious. I think I would like to add them at the end though, so that you fry them, you know, slice them quite finely, fry them in a bit of oil, or put them in with the onion, you'll see what we're gonna do in a minute, and then put them on the top, that'd be delicious. If you put them in with the rice, they're just gonna go soggy, um, which is not what you want. So how do I get rid of the onion and garlic from the chopping board? I don't. Um, they go in the dishwasher, but it doesn't matter because I'm only ever cooking onion and garlic, cutting onion and garlic on them. Um, it, it's, that's the reason I use green boards and I've got green boards of all sizes and it's only for garlic and onion or anything I'm going to cook with garlic and onion. For example, if I'm cutting potatoes for something that I, I don't mind the garlic onion smell, I'll use this board or any other vegetable. But fruit never ever goes on this board. How many of you have been somewhere and had a fruit salad and the watermelon tastes like onion? It's just terrible, absolutely terrible. Okay, so while your rice is steaming, hopefully everybody has got all their rice in the pot with the noodles and the stock, and that is just steaming away quietly. Okay, in the meantime, I need another fry pan. And I'm going to turn it on to medium to medium high. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna fry the onion. Because what this rice is, it's a steamed rice and it's steamed in chicken stock, so it's got a beautiful flavour. It's got the little flecks of noodles in it which add texture and colour. And then there is a topping which is fried onions, fried or toasted pine nuts and currants. So it's a beautiful, slightly sweet, savoury, crispy topped rice and it's really a great accompaniment for absolutely everything you could just roast a chicken and have it on the side you can use it for any meal great with a barbecue perfect for jewish new year or rosh hashanah which is coming up because it's sweet so i think it's a win-win this dish and it goes with absolutely everything all right let's fry the onions i'm going to put the rest of the oil in we started with a quarter of a cup and i've used half for the noodles and half for the onion I'm just going to spread that around the pan and I'm going to add my onion. No, there's no garlic in this. Um, but if you love garlic, by all means, throw it in. No, no garlic at all. Can you hear that noise? That's my dog drinking water. I have a dog the size of a horse, a puppy, 35 kilo horse, and he drinks like, you heard it. Anyway, all right, so wooden spoon again, same one. I'm just going to toss the onions in the oil just to coat them and it's still on a medium heat i want it to fry i don't want them to be soft and um, translucent i want them to be golden and fried okay so we'll give that a few minutes and i'll just tell you about this this um recipe because it's a funny story. Years ago, it must have been um, about 2012 or 2013, um, I got an email from a lady called Gloria Pink who lives in Nova Scotia in Canada. And Gloria said that she saw our book in Tablet Magazine in the US, the online thing, I think. And um, she wanted some tips on Sydney. Where she should eat, where she should go, da da da. So I answered the email and I answered her and I told her, you know, this is what, where I like to eat and this is, you should go to, oh, you should go to Bondi Beach and whatever I, else I told her. And she, anyway, she came to Sydney. She had a great trip. I, I was away, so we never connected. And then she went back to Nova Scotia. In the meantime, she bought our books in Sydney and we started chatting on via email. And she gave us 
this book. She got the back cover girl. She gave us this glorious blueberry tart, which is in um, this book, along with the Israeli rice pillar. And I just want to show you this blueberry tart because it's very, very special. And a lot of people forget about it, I must say, but when blueberries are in season and they're plentiful, that is when you need to make this. So this is Gloria's glorious blueberry tart. Really, really wonderful. It uses, you sort of make a blueberry jam with half the blueberries and then you stir in the fresh blueberries and put it in a tart shell. It's really good. Okay, so your onions should be frying. Again, I'm not looking for soft translucent here. I'm looking for fried, golden, crisp edged onions. Okay, medium heat on their way. Oh, great. So Sharon said you just bought some blueberries. This is very good and very unusually, unusual and different. I love it. Okay, so back to our rice. Just keep an eye on your onions. I'm chatting away here while the edges are burning. Keep stirring. Still got a way to go. I'd like another few minutes, I think. These are going to take about a good 10 minutes, I think, to cook properly. I'm going to turn it down a tiny bit now. All right, so let's, okay. Um, Esther said, do I ever coat the onions in flour first? I've never done that. I've never done that. Um, I might, no, I might do it if I'm putting it in a casserole where I want the sauce to be thick, but for this dish, no. What does it do? Does it make it more crisp, perhaps? Interesting. Um, okay, so someone said, can we add chopped fried vegetables instead of currants and pine nuts? Absolutely. Um, Think about what you would like. You've got a lovely fluffy flavoured rice. What would you like on top? I think onions are a definite, but I guess there are some people that don't love onions. And then what would you put instead of onions? Well, the mushrooms I think is a great idea. Um, currants give it that little bit of sweetness that I do think it needs. So I, I think any sort of currant, you could do a date, you could do the barberry, you could do sultanas. I think it's really, really important. Um, Lana said, will we post the recipe? Yes, the recipe will be on the introduction to the video on YouTube. It's also on the email you got um, confirming your registration for this event. Uh, Estelle says she doesn't like onions. Oh, Estelle, Estelle, Estelle. Really? They're so good. They're like the cornerstone of cooking, particularly Jewish cooking. I don't know. I have a few friends who don't eat onions and I'm just so sad for them because it's such a delicious thing. And I love them raw or cooked or whatever. Um, cranberries for the rice, yes, cranberries would be good also. I think any dried fruit that's got a bit of tartness would be very, very good. Okay, instead of onions, mm, mushrooms. Ah, not sure what else. I think that, you know, this is a rice that's really celebrating the fried onion. I think it's part of what it is. Otherwise, it's just steamed rice. Um, Jennifer, okay, so what I should have said is don't lift the lid. So with four cups of rice and two cups, sorry, two cups of rice and four cups of water, lid on, don't disturb it for 20 minutes, you want it to steam. So don't open it yet. Um, Jennifer says hers has absorbed all the liquid. Taste a bit of it, it should still be chalky, I'm sure, after this time. So just put the lid back on and let it continue to steam. If at the end of the 20 minutes, it's really dry and not cooked through, then you can add a bit more and steam a bit longer, but it really should be the right amount, um, hopefully, fingers crossed. Okay, so my onions are going really nicely. Now, an interesting thing about this recipe is the recipe calls for putting the pine nuts into there once they're cooked. I find that if you want your pine nuts really nicely toasted, they're not going to get really nicely toasted in there with the onion because the onion um, will then overcook. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the onion out when it's cooked. And it's not quite cooked, so I might just, see this is, I would say the onion is sort of eight out of 10 cooked at this point. Nearly there, but not quite. I'm going to take it out and just put it in a bowl. You don't have to do this, but I think this will get, get us a perfect, perfect result. And I'm going to heat up the pan again. And I'm going to add the pine nuts. And then I'm going to toast them on their own. And once they're lovely and golden, and I'm not going to leave their side because we all know what happens when you leave pine nuts or sesame seeds in a pan and, and don't pay attention. We've all done it. 
how many batches have we all thrown out in our lives? Millions. I'm going to stand here and watch it and they're going to be golden. Then I'm going to put the onion back in, the currants in, toss them all together and that's going to be the topping for the rice when it's finished. Okay, everyone up to where I am. Okay. Um, yeah, if you have the recipe, the rice will cook for the same amount of time. Yep. As long as you've got the liquid to the rice measurement right. Okay, so I'm glad that you're all cooking along. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, yes, you could absolutely use leek. I think leek would be really, really good. I love leek and I think that would be a great substitute for onions, but I imagine that the people that don't like onions don't like leeks either. The other thing that would be quite nice is chives. Maybe that's mild enough for people who don't like onions. My mother-in-law used to make this fantastic rice with chives and she used to saute the chives in oil and then um, mix those through the onion, through the rice. Saute the chives in oil, mix it through the rice and it was fantastic. So try chives. Um, uh, Michelle, I'm using this vermicelli. <laughs> I'm just using this one. This is just San Remo supermarket egg noodles. That pan's a little bit hot. If I put those in, they're going to burn. So I'm just going to give it a minute to cool down. Um, yep. Yeah, yeah um, and event. I'm trying to read my eyes. It's so far away. Okay. Evangelia. Evangelia? Evangelia has asked. Beautiful name, actually. If we can use pistachios instead of pine nuts, absolutely. Use any nuts you like. Slivered almonds would be fantastic. Um, pistachios, macadamias, almonds. Pretty much any nut goes with rice. I think it would be a great thing. Okay, so once that's cooled down a bit, I'm going to put in my pine nuts. And I'm just going to carefully, and I'm going to watch them, toss them in the hot pan just for a minute. Does anyone know where their pine nuts are from? It's, a, it's a, I've just looked at the pack that I bought this morning and they're made in China. And I wonder, is Australia producing pine nuts? Or is that not something we produce? Does anyone know the answer to that? It'd be good to know where to get some Australian pine nuts, if you could. Okay, so they're gonna go brown very, very quickly. All right. Okay, someone asked she didn't realize the recipe was for eight people. Should she freeze the rice noodle mixture and make the topping separately when ready to serve again? I would probably cook it, put it into a takeaway container, let it cool, seal it really well and freeze it cooked. Um, I don't know how you would do freezing the mixture once it's been sorted. Are you talking about when it's cooked or not cooked? Okay, these are brown, going into here now. Okay, so I've got my pine nuts and my onions, which I'm just gonna to toss together just to stop the pine nuts from cooking. I've probably taken them a little bit far. Okay, well, I'm just gonna leave that for a minute, let that cool down. Okay. Everyone should have their rice steaming. We've got five more minutes and it should be ready. We will have, we've sauteed our onion, we've toasted our pine nuts, and in a minute I'm going to put them all back in the pan and I'm going to toss them together so you get the currants, the pine nuts and the onions together in a delicious jumble of sweetness, crispiness and oiliness and nuttiness. Um, yeah, someone says, haven't seen Oz pine nuts yet for years. Chinese, I agree. These, and these Chinese ones are tiny. I don't know if any of you have noticed, but the Chinese ones are just minuscule. Um, and I did like the big ones that you used to be able to get. Okay, so, oh, okay, a quick chiffon cake question from Arlene. She made a chiffon cake and it fell out when she turned it upside down on the bottle. And um, yeah, happens to all of us. And it's very sad when it happens because you get this beautiful big cake, put the bottle in, turn it upside down and Spells out. What the reason that happens is because it's just slightly undercooked. It can be five minutes or 10 minutes for that recipe. So what I suggest you do is make it again, sorry, and just add, I would probably add 15 minutes cooking time. See if that works. And if that works and the cake is slightly overcooked, then next time cut off five minutes. But it's always that it's just the tiniest bit of moisture in a chiffon cake will make it fall out of the tin. We've all had it. Sorry, yeah, one of those things. Okay, so apparently Italy makes beautiful pine nuts, but we can't get them here. Yeah, from Lebanon also. So we need to look for non-Chinese pine nuts if we could, because I think the ones from China are not my favorite. Um, so I'm gonna keep an eye out for that. All right, 
is everyone up to where I am? Let's go to the next stage. We're just going to put that pan on again. It was too hot. And I'm going to put this mixture back. And I'm going to toss through the currants. And that's the topping done. Okay. It's absolutely so delicious. That's it. Topping done. Now, as far as doing this dish ahead, and I'm going to turn the heat off now. I would assemble it at the last minute if you can. You don't have to. If you want to do the whole thing ahead and you'll see what it looks like, you can. But if you can keep these in the pan, have the rice in your serving dish, which you might microwave to heat up. Rice works very well in the microwave when it's steamed. Cover it with glad wrap, microwave it to heat. Quickly give this a toss and top it at the last minute. That is the dish at its peak. If you can't do that, and if you're cooking for a crowd, and if you're doing a big Friday night, or you're doing um, a Jewish New Year feast, and you don't want to do that, then by all means, make it ahead and just reheat the whole dish. Um, and I would probably heat, reheat this in the oven. I would cover it with foil, the whole thing with the topping, and reheat it so that these don't go soggy. Because the beauty of these is that you've got the, the light, light crunch of the pine nuts, you've got the soft and crispy onion, and you've got the succulent currants and you'll just lose that when you microwave it. So that's my tip. So two minutes for this. In the meantime, any more questions? Pine nuts, yeah. Shannon says, so Lois says, pine nuts are mainly from China, Korea, US and Russia. Thanks, Google, thanks. Um, did I soak the um, currants? No, I did not, not for this recipe. Oh, hi Greta. Greta's a friend of Gloria's who we were talking about um, and she lives near Chicago. Oh, isn't that great? Yeah, so she also made it and overcooked the noodles. We've all done it. We've all done it. Thanks, Greta. Nice to hear from you. So back to Gloria Pink for a minute. So Gloria with her um, tart and her Israeli rice, rice pilaf, who lives in Nova Scotia in Canada, has become like a friend on email. We chat from time to time. Um, she sends me pictures of her family and what she's cooking, and it's just absolutely divine. And we thought for a minute that we would do a tour of this new book, to Toronto and could we go to Nova Scotia on the way, even though it's a completely different part of Canada. And we thought about it for a minute, but then of course coronavirus hit and all those plans were gone. So maybe one day Nova Scotia, sounds like a place we'd like to visit. So Esther says she's reheated this rice in the oven. Yeah, great, that's really good to know. I assume covered in foil and the rice continues to steam and everything else stays crispy and hot, yeah. Uh, can you use craisins instead of currants? Absolutely. Any dried fruit would work really well. Uh, what a great question, Vilma. Which Monday Morning Cooking Club cookbook is the best one to buy if you haven't really purchased? It's a really, really hard question. I don't know what everyone thinks. I'd love to know. I might start at the first and work my way through, or you might actually do what I'm about to talk about now, which is our oh, fantastic set of four. And... We, for all of you who are watching today, are putting on a special, which we really don't do very much. You'll notice that um, you know, our prices are never as low as Booktopia because we just don't do that. But just for all of you who are coming into our kitchen every week, and we love it so much, we are selling our set of four, which is the one new hardcover and the three first books in soft cover. For the retail price is 170 plus postage, and we are selling it for $140. It's $30 off plus postage. If you live in Sydney and you'd like to collect it from the post office, the no cost of postage, I can arrange that as well. So just send me a private message. The code that you need to put in for that discount is gonna be sent to you in the letter tomorrow, the follow-up letter that I always send you, which will have the recipe, the code for this special of the four books, which you put into our website, which is mondaymorningcookingclub.com.au. Go to the online shop, find the set of four, put the code in, um, and you'll be able to buy these books. They make a great gift. We will ribbon it and tag it if you like, and we'll write a message if you want to send it to someone else, but it makes an amazing gift. So in answer to you, Vilma, I would get the set because it's very hard to choose which is the best. The whole set is really what you need. Um, okay, so yeah, Julie, Julie Ann says book one to start. That's not a bad place to start. I agree with that. But book one is only available in soft cover now. No more hard cover of that one. That was gone a long time ago. All right, so our rice should be ready. Let's have a look. Let's have a peek. 
Great. So mine looks like this. So you've got the noodles that have come to the top. You have got the rice, which is steamed underneath. And I'm gonna just use my spoon just to check. Yeah, it's absolutely perfect. It's absolutely, I want you to see, soft and fluffy and light. And I'm gonna taste it because, um, just wanna make sure it's cooked. It's a really important thing that everybody needs to remember that tasting is essential because if I just assume it's cooked and serve it and the rice is chalky, that's not good. I'm just gonna give it a toss around. Oh, it's definitely cooked. It just has the most beautiful, you can see how fluffy it is. It's, it's perfect, but I will taste it. So let's see, everyone can have a taste of theirs if they're ready, if it's ready. Perfect. I'll tell you what I did forget to put in. I forgot to put in the salt, um, which was in the recipe, into the stock. Um, it's really important to do that, and I'm sorry that I did leave it out completely. But what I would suggest you do now, if you have it, if you have left the salt out like I have, I would. It needs a teaspoon of salt. Okay, and we're going to just measure a teaspoon. And this is really amazing salt. It doesn't have the cover on it, but it's not supermarket salt. This is Olsen table salt. I'll grab the packet in a minute to show you, which is my new favorite table salt instead of Saxa. It's just a really, there's nothing processed about it. There's nothing in it that you don't want to eat. So I'm going to put the salt in and then I'm going to toss it through again. It's much better if you can put it in the stock in the beginning. So apologies about that. Hopefully some of you read the recipe, but anyway, salt's in. Now we'll have another taste. Perfect, perfect. Okay, so, serving dish. Think about what you put it in. If you're cooking it ahead of time, it's a good idea to think about putting it in the dish that's going to be able to be reheated when you serve it. So this is probably not a good choice. It just looks nice. Um, so if I was serving it now, I would put it in something lovely like this. This is sort of a glass dish. So if you want to reheat it in the oven, make sure you're putting it into an oven proof dish so you can go from oven to table. And I'm just going to, I mean, look how lovely that rice is. Hot, steaming, fluffy, gorgeous rice. And it didn't even stick to the pan because there's lots of stock in there, but it was perfect amount, four cups of stock to two cups of water. That's it. And then the topping goes on top. And the way I found this recipe from Gloria actually is that she was sending me photos of what she was cooking for Rosh Hashanah one year, I think. And I spotted the rice and I said, what's that? And she told me and I said, please, please send the recipe, which she did and it made it into the book. So maybe one day I'll go to Gloria's for dinner in Nova Scotia, or we will. What do you think, Gloria? That'd be fun. Has anyone been to Nova Scotia? I just know of it because they're famous for their salmon. Thanks, Liz. Lovely to have you here. Okay. So that's it. That is my Israeli rice pilaf, which is absolutely beautiful. Ready to serve. And I just want to say, show you two things quickly. First is the... I'm going to just grab the, the salt because I want to show you. It's really good. Um, yeah, okay. So Olsen's is a Australian salt company and they make a whole range of amazing, amazing salt. We're not sponsored. We've got nothing to do with them. We just love their product. But if you find their website, it's O-L-S-S-O-N, Olsen Salt, and they have this table salt, which I think is just natural, nothing in it, no pouring agent, no preservatives, and it's just really good Australian salt. This is the one I would be using in my kitchen, which I do use every day. They also have a flaky sea salt, which is lovely, and um, I'm, a, I'm a big fan, a very big fan, okay? The other thing I want to show you is the honey cake that we were talking about. These are the layers, the biscuits, or the pastry layers that I've made ahead of this delicious, it's like a honey biscuit. And as I said earlier, if you, were, if you were here when I started, I can't remember if it was before or after we started the session, you make a filling with cream cheese and honey and cream and you layer 
it between them, you coat it in it and you put it in the fridge for two days and you have the most delicious, soft, multi-layered cake, which is just going to shape up everybody's Jewish New Year. It's just a different take on the, on the honey cake. Um, that recipe is in our new book, Now for Something Sweet. And I will be doing a few sessions on that cake over the next um, few days. On Sunday at four o'clock, I'm doing an event for the Great Synagogue in Sydney on Zoom. So if you look at the Great Synagogue, it's going to be on our social media as well. I'm doing that in this kitchen. I'm going to be showing you how to make that cake and you're welcome to join that event and register on Zoom. Um, the other thing is I've just filmed a video with Michael Rantisi from Kippo Street Kitchen where we make that um, honey cake together and that's really, really funny and fun because he's gorgeous and he taught me a thing on, or two about rolling out dough, which was very good. His were better than mine, I must say, but the result was fabulous. So that's the honey cake story. I've also been baking, which I just wanted to share with you, some little mini chocolate and tahini babkas. So these are the recipe, another one from our first book. I'd love to do a session on these with you one day. It's the most special, special, incredible recipe. And you know when you buy, you, you grab a book and you make a recipe and it's hard at first and it's complicated and you have to really think about it. Well, that recipe was like that in the beginning. And now that is my go-to quick, I need a gift for someone, I'm gonna make a babka. So I want it to become as easy for you as it has become for all of us to make that sort of thing. So just remember, new book, Now for Something Sweet. It's got fab fabulous recipes and we're gonna support that book all along by teaching you and sharing with you all the recipes and the way to make them quickly and well and easily. Um, I think that's about it for me for the moment. Remember, our set of four, <sighs> really great gift, really great to have. Of course, we're so proud of these four books and. The more people that have them, the greater joy it really, really gives us. Full of amazing, amazing recipes. Again, we're going to send the coupon code out with our email tomorrow, which will give you three days to buy them at the special price. I think that's it for me. Any more questions before we finished? Um, okay, so how to reheat the rice last thing? Yes, sure. So best thing is to make it as is, like this. Put it in an oven-proof dish cover it with foil when you're ready to serve it and put it in the oven for 180 probably for about 20 minutes. Best, I did say that it's at its absolute peak now, which means you'd need to have your little garnish fried things in a fry pan ready to reheat and your rice in the pot just steamed, but that's hard when you've got people. So I think that's not really the way to go. I would do all of it ahead and just reheat it in the oven like this. Okay. Um, oh, yes. Vilma says, yes, that's a really good point. They also have an iodine version of this salt, which is fantastic because, you know, there's a thing about Australians. We don't get enough iodine in our diet and that's why they put it in salt. But it's not in this one. It's in the Olsons have an iodine salt, uh, which I'm going to buy next time, actually. Um, thanks, Lily, for joining us. She ate sushi while she watched. Well, that's, that's good. I hope that you all joined, joined in and cooked this and I'd love to see your dishes and please do send them to me. Um, I want to say another thing, actually, so much to say, and I keep forgetting, is Jewish New Year is coming up, as you all know, um, in a few weeks. And even if you don't celebrate Jewish New Year, if you're not Jewish or you, it's not your thing, we have so many recipes that are so great for so many occasions. So don't, like, forget about us because we're talking Jewish New Year. Come and join the feasting. We have got Zoom cook-alongs lined up for the week before New Year so you can actually cook your dinner with us. We're going to be doing a brisket with honey, prunes and carrots and potatoes, which means it's like a one pot dish. Everything is one roasting pan and it is absolutely brilliant. We're gonna do a cook along for that on the Wednesday before Rosh Hashanah. So you can actually get your ingredients and make your dinner with us. We'll be doing um, a twist on our classic honey cake on the Tuesday before Rosh Hashanah, which is gonna be fantastic. The idea is that you make it with us on the Tuesday and then wrap it up till Friday or Saturday and it will be at its sticky peak. And um, that's what we're doing the week. So we're going to have a newsletter coming out on Monday, hopefully, or Tuesday. So if you haven't signed up for our newsletter, just go to our website and it, the little thing will come up or pop up and you just fill in your name and email and then you'll get um, all of our emails 
telling you what is coming up um, every week. And we've got so much coming up, I'm really excited and I'm sure I've forgotten half of it already. Um, Miriam, I don't have the link for Sunday Zoom. I will post it on um, Instagram today and on Facebook today, um, if that helps you. Thank you everybody for coming along. Any more questions before we um, finish? Um, okay, thank you for a great Zoom class. Something special to add to our ISO Rosh Hashanah in Noosa. Ah, oh, you're in Noosa, yeah, lucky you. Lucky you. And remember with all these recipes that serve eight, this is great for days, you know, probably two days with rice, but you know, you can make it, you can put half of it on the table on the other half, you can either freeze for another day or just eat over the next two days or give to your neighbour, which is even better. So thank you, thank you everybody for joining us. It's been really fun. I've now got my side dish for Friday night tonight, which is why I love these Friday sessions actually, because I get to cook half my dinner. So it suits me too. And I hope that you are all um, enjoying the cooking, whether you're in lockdown or not. It's always a joy, always a joy. Thank you, Bella, lovely to see you. And thanks Estelle and everyone. And Jennifer, Fiona, thank you for joining. Cheers everyone. And I wish you all a good, safe and happy weekend. The weather's looking fantastic in Sydney. Hopefully it's gonna be as good everywhere else. So see you all. I'm gonna head off now till next time. Thank you. Bye.